Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're once again talking about dividend ETFs and specifically evaluating the latest dividend growth numbers from three of the most popular dividend ETFs out there. Vanguard's Dividend Appreciation ETF, VIG, Schwab's U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, SCHD, and iShares Core Dividend Growth ETF, DGRO, or what I'm going to call DGRO. And actually, I'm going to throw a fourth one in there because people have been bringing it up in the comments. The Wisdom Tree U.S. Quality Dividend Growth ETF, DGRW, which I'm going to call DGRU. So there's DGRO and DGRU. So anyway, you get it. And these just happen to be three of the top four dividend ETFs by total assets, as well as another in the top 10. Now, we've talked about some of these before on this channel, especially SCHD. But with its popularity skyrocketing the last couple of years and performance lagging in 2023, a lot of people are asking questions about if it's still the best dividend ETF for their portfolio. And the answer, like most things on this channel, is... It depends. But first, let's take a look at how these funds actually did in 2023 in terms of overall performance. DGRU had the best year with a total return at almost 19%. VIG was next with a total return over 14%. DGRO was at over 10%. And then SEHD was bringing up the rear at a little over 4.5%. Now, obviously, we know that the S&P 500 had a total return of over 26%, but comparing a dividend-focused ETF to the S&P 500 isn't really apples to apples. Now, usually people buying a dividend ETF have a certain strategy in mind that's different than just buying the total market. So comparing against the S&P 500 doesn't always make a lot of sense, but someone will undoubtedly bring it up. So I'm just including it anyway. And now that we're actually done with 2023, the full year of dividends for each of these ETFs have been announced as well. And we can compare them to see how they did in terms of dividend growth year over year. Now, SCHD had a dividend yield of 3.49%, but only had a 3.77% growth rate from the previous year. Now, VIG had a dividend yield of 1.88% for the year and a 7.93% growth rate compared to last year. DGRO had a dividend yield of 2.45% and a year-over-year -year growth rate at 12.68%, which is the highest of the group over the last year by far. And then lastly, DGRU had a dividend yield of 1.74% and actually had a negative growth rate of negative 5.78%. So they actually paid less in dividends this year than they did last year. And we'll talk about this more here in a minute. So overall, if you're a dividend growth investor, it's a little bit all over the place. SCHD has been one of the best dividend growth ETFs out there pretty much since its inception. But they had a pretty modest gain this year compared to their own history. Now, is that concerning? They still have the highest yield out of the whole group of ETFs, and their historical dividend growth is really strong. But then you look at DGRO, and they outpaced all of them in terms of dividend growth this year. So does that mean it's automatically the best ETF for dividend growth going forward? I mean, how much weight should we actually put on one specific year compared to their whole history? And that's something that we're going to break down here in a minute. But first, let's actually take a look at their historical returns and dividend growth of the four ETFs. So as it relates to total return, here's how the ETFs compare on a few different timelines. In the three-year, DGRU was the best of the group at over 41% and actually outpaced the S&P 500 over that time frame. All the rest were still pretty competitive though, just barely lagging the S&P 500 by a few percentage points. And now if we go to the five-year, so once again, DGRU is the best of the dividend ETFs with the others kind of lagging behind. Still strong performance, but just not quite at the level of the S&P 500, which surprisingly, DGRU is right there again. And then if we look at the 10-year, again, DGRU has outpaced the S&P 500 at over 210%. Next up is SCHD at 187%, VIG at 174 and DGRO at 167 so again, in general, I wouldn't expect the dividend ETFs to keep pace with the S&P 500 over a longer time period. But in this case, it's kind of interesting because DGRU actually did. But still, overall, I think they performed well as a group, with the highest DGRU having an average annual return of a little over 12% over the past decade, and the lowest DGRO having an average annual return of 10.34%. And when you look at dividend growth, you see a similar story. Now for VIG, they've had seemingly accelerating dividend growth with their three-year being higher than their five-year, which is higher than their 10-year. Basically going from 8.74% compound annual growth rate over the past decade to 11.79% compound annual growth rate over the past three years. SEHD has some of the best dividend growth numbers over the past decade, with a 10-year dividend growth compound annual growth rate of 11.39%. 
Degrow has been pretty consistent in terms of dividend growth around 8.5% to 10% over all three timelines. Now, their first full year of dividends was 2015, so it's not quite 10 years of history. Now, lastly, Degrow has 10 years of data, but 2013 wasn't a full year of dividends, so it skews that number quite a bit. Now, if we take their first full year, 2014, you get a 9.37% average dividend growth over the past decade, which would actually be second lowest. And you add to the fact that their current year number is negative and their three and five year numbers are the lowest of the group, we can see that Degrow has the poorest dividend growth numbers out of the four. And if we take a step back and look at the year-over-year -year numbers versus the 10-year numbers, we can see that while there are clear differences between the current year and the 10-year, there's not a lot of consistency across the numbers. And here's what I mean. You have Degrew, which is the best in terms of total return, both in the current year and over the last 10, but has the lowest dividend yield as well as one of the lower dividend growth percentages, including negative growth this past year. And SHD was the worst performer this past year, but it's one of the stronger performers over the past 10 and has the highest dividend growth number over the past decade by quite a bit. So in general, what I notice is that it's hard to find any meaningful trends in the numbers, especially when you look at dividend growth, because SHD in general has a declining dividend growth trend. But if you look at the dividend history, you can see that dividend growth can vary by a lot in any given year, with a few years over 15% dividend growth alone, while others are less than half that. And VIG has the same volatility as it relates to dividend growth, which you can see here. Degrow has the same. Degrew as well. And I think this is where we have to treat ETF analysis different than we do stocks. Now, obviously, past returns are never a good indicator of future performance, but I think when it comes to analyzing future prospects, it's just harder to do for ETFs than it would be a single company. Because if a dividend stock has slowing dividend growth, we can dig into their financials or their earnings calls or their 10Ks and get an idea of why their dividend growth is slowing. And then we can make a determination on if we think that'll continue or if it'll change. And sometimes the management team will flat out say, we're looking to improve it going forward, and you can just monitor it and see if they actually do it or not. But then with an ETF, it's just not really possible because you would have to do that with every single company that it holds. And then calculate some probability based on its percent weight and all of that, which almost completely ruins the part of the value proposition of investing in an ETF to begin with, where ideally it saves you time and stress as an investor because they're doing the work for you. So when analyzing ETFs, looking at historical data is fine. It gives us an idea of how it's performed in the past and maybe what it might do in the future, but I don't really think it gets to the root of what we're looking to do. Because as obvious as this might sound, the difference in performance and dividend growth between these funds is always going to be due to the different companies that are selected into the indexes that they follow. So to really evaluate and compare, we need to dig into the methodology of each one. And at a high level, here's how they each break down. So with SCHD, it's U.S. equities, no REITs, with a minimum of 10 consecutive years of dividend payments that are in the top 50% of dividend yield. And then the top 100 are selected based on a composite score consisting of the following quality criteria. Free cash flow to debt ratio, return on equity, dividend yield, and five-year dividend growth rate. If I had to sum up this methodology, I would say it's focused on high-yielding dividend payers that have the best combination of free cash flow to debt, return on equity, yield, and five-year dividend growth rate. Now, if we look at VIG, it's U.S. equities, no REITs, with 10-plus years of dividend growth that are not within the top 25% of dividend yield. So if I had to sum that one up, I would say it's focused on dividend growers in the bottom 75% of dividend yield. And now Degrow is U.S. equities, again, no REITs, with 5-plus consecutive years of dividend growth and a positive consensus earnings forecast, with a payout ratio of less than 75% that are not within the top 10% of dividend yield. So for that, I would say it's focused on dividend growers in the bottom 90% of dividend yield with positive earnings forecasts and an acceptable payout ratio. And then lastly, D grew. And now this one gets a little complicated, so bear with me. But it's U.S. equities, which includes REITs that pay dividends but are not in the top 5% of dividend yield but are in the top 50% of a composite score that includes a quality factor composed of return on equity, return on assets, gross profits over assets, and cash flows over assets, and a momentum factor that's composed of stocks risk-adjusted returns over the past 6 and 12 months. And then once that base index is created, they take the companies that have an earnings yield that's greater than their dividend yield, 
and then another score based on 50% medium term estimated earnings growth, 25% historical three year average return on equity, and 25% historical three year average of return on assets. And so to sum that one up, if I can, would be focused on dividend payers in the bottom 95% of dividend yield that are in the top 50% of their quality and momentum criteria, earnings yield greater than dividends, and estimated earnings growth. So obviously, this one is quite a bit more complicated than the others. But I think what's interesting is that none of their criteria is related to dividend growth at all. It's more about earnings growth as opposed to dividend growth, which kind of explains why their overall return numbers have been very good, but their dividend yield and growth numbers, not so much, because technically they're not focusing on that. So what does this actually mean for us? Now, how I look at this is we can't get caught up in what a dividend ETF does in any one year, because it's not likely going to tell us much. Even if you dug into every stock that it holds, which would be impractical, the stocks are going to change at least once a year as the index goes through its rebalancing and update process. So while looking at their historical returns and dividend growth is fun to try to get an idea of which ETFs are the best performing, it really doesn't tell us anything about what they're going to do in the future. Because at the end of the day, the methodology is really the most important piece of information that we should use to determine which ETFs make sense for our portfolio. So the best thing we can do is understand how ETFs are different in terms of the stocks that they pick and make sure that it aligns with our personal investment strategy. So if we look at these ETFs again, we can see that they all focus on slightly different things. SEHD prioritizes higher dividend yield and includes some criteria for dividend growth. VIG prioritizes dividend growth and not being a high yielding stock. DGRO prioritizes dividend growth, a positive earnings forecast, and a healthy payout ratio while DGRU prioritizes quality fundamentals, earnings yield, and earnings growth. So the question we have to ask ourselves when we're evaluating these is, okay, well, what's our personal investment strategy focused on and which one matches up with that? If we're prioritizing dividend income with good opportunities for dividend growth and total return, then SCHD makes perfect sense. If you're focused on dividend growth more than yield and want to ensure you're invested in companies with healthy payout ratios, then DGRO makes perfect sense. But if you're mostly focused on total return as opposed to dividend yield or growth, but you think quality dividend companies with good earnings potential are the best option for good returns versus risk, then DGRU makes perfect sense. So as you can see, there's not necessarily a perfect dividend ETF. It's more about which is the perfect dividend ETF for you and your strategy. So even if SCHD had a down year in terms of total return and dividend growth, especially compared to something like DGrow and DGRU, if its methodology still fits your investment strategy, then there's no need to overreact. Now, if you bought SCHD because people told you it would continue to outpace the S&P 500 back in 2022, then okay, it might be time to reassess. But other than that, it's still doing what it's made to do. And we talk about it all the time, but this is the challenge with investing nowadays. We feel like every day, every month, every year, the information we get means that we need to do something. When a lot of times, the best thing we can do is nothing. So what do you guys think about the dividend growth numbers from the previous year? Is it something to worry about or is it normal yearly fluctuations? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you guys want to see more analysis and breakdowns of specific ETFs, click on this playlist right here. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom. So keep building and stacking wins. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.